Why does ice float on water? When a solid mass of a substance is put on a liquid of the same substance, it generally sinks. The atoms or molecules in a solid are usually closer together than are the atoms or molecules in their liquids and gases. So most solids are denser than their liquid and gas forms. But there are some exceptions. Some solids, such as silicon, germanium, bismuth and ice, are less dense than their liquids. But this is never seen in nature except for water because the melting points are too high. So why does ice float on water? Because ice is less dense than water and less dense matter floats on more dense liquids. Now we have to answer two questions. The first, why is ice less dense than water? And the second one, why does less dense matter float on more dense matter? In order to answer the first of these, we need to take a closer look at water structure. A water molecule consists of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Also, water molecules are not linear, but angular. The oxygen and hydrogen atoms share electrons, creating a pair of chemical bonds. But an oxygen atom is bigger than a hydrogen atom and has more protons in its nucleus. So, the oxygen atom pulls the shared electron towards itself with greater force. As a result of this, the negatively charged shared electrons are closer to the oxygen atom, which gives the oxygen atom a partial negative charge and leaves the hydrogen atoms with partial positive charges. This uneven charge distribution means that water molecules interact with each other this weak interaction is called a hydrogen bond. When the temperature is above 4 degrees C, hydrogen bonds are quickly broken. Because water molecules have kinetic energy, this means that the hydrogen bonds are not strong enough to hold the water molecules together. When the temperature drops below 4 C, the water molecules slow down enough to allow the hydrogen bonds to bind each other together. So the molecule structure is reformed by the hydrogen bonds. Being angular, water molecules cause empty spaces to appear in the molecule structure so that the volume increases during freezing. Now we have the answer to our first question. Ice is less dense than water because hydrogen bonds cause empty spaces to appear during freezing so that the volume increases and the density decreases. That's why if you put a full bottle of water in the freezer the bottle will break after freezing because the volume has increased. Moving on to the second question, why does less dense matter float on more dense matter? In order to answer this, we need to understand Archimedes' principle. This states that when an object is completely or partially immersed in a fluid, the fluid applies an upward force called a buoyant force or buoyancy on the object. This force is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object.
so we can calculate the buoyant force by measuring the weight of displaced fluid. Think about a fully immersed object. The buoyant force tries to lift the object to the surface, whereas gravity tries to pull the object to the bottom. If the buoyant force is greater than the force of gravity, then the object will accelerate upward, rise to the surface, and then float on the surface partially submerged. If the buoyant force equals the force of gravity, then the object will float fully immersed. If the buoyant force is less than the force of gravity, then the object will accelerate downward and sink to the bottom. If we look at the difference, buoyant force take away gravity force, we can form the equation. Buoyant force minus gravity force equals density of fluid minus density of object times the gravitational acceleration times the volume of the object. If the density of the fluid is greater than the density of the object, buoyant force minus gravity force will be positive. Buoyant force will be greater than gravity force, so the object will accelerate upward, rise to the surface, and then float on the surface, partially submerged. If the density of fluid equals the density of the object, buoyant force minus gravity force will be zero. Buoyant force will equal gravity force, so the object will float fully immersed. If the density of fluid is less than the density of the object, buoyant force minus gravity force will be negative. Buoyant force will be less than gravity force, so the object will accelerate downward and sink to the bottom. So, we can see that floating or sinking depends just on the densities. The density of water is about 1 gram per cubic centimetre at 25 degrees C, whereas the density of ice is about 0.92 grams per cubic centimetre at 0 degrees C. Buoyant force minus gravity force equals density of fluid minus density of object times gravitational acceleration times the volume of the object. Buoyant force minus gravity force equals 1 minus 0 0.92 times the gravitational acceleration times the volume of the object or the volume of the displaced fluid, which is greater than 0. We've shown that the buoyant force is greater than the gravity force, from which it follows that ice floats. So now we know why ice floats on water.